Hello, I'm Pauline from Pauline's Quilters World. I'd just love to introduce you to some new exciting things that we've got happening here at PQW. I have been a very passionate quilter for a lot of years and I've been a very passionate teacher of patchwork and quilting. One of the things that I find is the biggest struggle out there, all of those people that try to quilt on a small domestic machine and they don't have success with the bulk moving through. I have so many people that try to free motion quilt and they struggle with that and a lot of people give up. I'm here to ask you to keep trying because I've come up with this wonderful um, idea of templates to be able to help you get started as a, a normal quilter on a normal domestic machine, quilting with your feed dogs up and doing some beautiful design work. And, and working through the kind of program I'm going to be putting together for you, you will step up step by step by step to get you into free motion quilting that you can be very, very proud of. So I'm just going to explain a few things on the quilt behind us. I want you to really focus on what we're going to show you. And we'll just take you on a little journey. We'll start over this side. Now I want you to focus on these curves. So we can see we've got gentle curves very very gentle and this is all done with your feed dogs up we can do some fill in work later on but we'll get to that a bit later we can do a normal grid we can come across the quilt we can do some very gentle curves now learning to do these shapes with a line that you've already drawn is going to train your brain how these shapes work so eventually you'll be able to do them free motion without drawing them on and using the system we've got to show you I'm sure will help you a lot. We'll come over here we've also still got some very gentle lines here we've got some curvy lines with some curves in the middle we've got some gentle curves here and I just want to show you that very simple quilting designs can look fantastic. And if you don't already know, we do all of our quilts quilt as you go. So we're only teaching you to quilt one small piece at a time that fits through that small space in your machine without any problem at all. We've got lovely gentle curves here. Very, very gentle, but it still highlights the background fabric. We come over here, we've got directional straight lines, just doing different things with them. Very, very simple to do. Some geometric straight lines down in this section. Still very, very simple to do. We'll work across. You know, some of these are a little bit fancier, but that'll be a bit later on when you get a little bit more proficient with quilting and we we'll step you up to free motion quilting. Come across, we've got the orange peel shape. This is so, so simple to quilt. Once again, feed dogs up normal sewing that's all we're doing more gentle curves lots and lots of gentle curves so let me show you the um, templates that I've designed to get you started so they come in a pack and I'll, I'll take them out and you can have a look at them a moment but it comes with a really great set of instructions it'll be a little booklet that you'll be able to take page by page teach yourself all of these designs using the templates. So I'm just going to show you some of the patterns that can be created from a very, very simple um, starting grid. Now it's just going to be whether you can see these, but we'll put these down. So you can see we've got all of these dots, they're holes. We're going to mark these dots onto our fabric. This creates a reference line to use the templates with. So this is a um, one and a half inch space here, one and a half inch this way. We have the smaller one that has the one inch spaces. So I'm going to show you the one and a half inch spaces and show you what designs you can create with that. And on this um, introduction sheet, it'll tell you what each of the templates are. So there's five different templates that come in the pack. Now from those five templates, you can create all of these different shapes. We show you step by step how to do it. We'll just go through some of the pages for you. 
and then I'll show you how they're used and it's all about lining up the dots and we do call them dot to dot, dot to dot quilting. Very, very simple process. So we can see we're going to use template C with template B grid and we're just going to mark the very simple curves. Then you're going to be able to quilt on those lines. Then you can come back and overlay and see all the different design elements that you can create by using two simple templates. Now what it's about is teaching you eventually you won't need to draw this line because you'll start to get the perception of distance. And it's, it's exactly like we learnt to write. You know, we, we had to learn to write all of our letters and words simply by repetitiveness. Now, if you're going to draw a line and stitch over and over these lines, eventually you'll just be able to mark the dots and you won't have to draw this line because you, you would have embedded it in your brain where to swing in and out. Very, very simple steps. We're using template B to mark out our grid and then we use template C to mark all the different curves. You know, and that's a stunning pattern to quilt onto a background fabric. We can do the clamshells and we're using template A to mark out our distance and then we're just going to mark, go from dot to dot and then we come back and we go dot to dot. So I just think it's a really great system to get you all started. That one's the same. Here we now can do a nice little curved border. Come back and do the melon shapes but make it look like a flower. So I'm very, very excited that I think we're going to get some wonderful results with you people starting to use these. So we'll just quickly go through the different shapes. But all of these patterns are in the booklet, so you will have this forever as reference. But look at these lines. Look how gentle they are and how nice they'll look. And remember, you won't have the dots there. They will be disappeared. You won't see them when you finish the quilting. And look at this. That's how you can turn that last shape into something like this. So we just want you to get encouraged that you can actually do it. Like you can do perfect circles. If you want to start learning how to do pebbles, use your templates to draw those designs, stitch over and over and over. The best way, once you get um, used to doing a little bit of stitching like this, unthread your machine, have no threads in it and just stitch, just sit at your fabric and just move in and out of these shapes. All of a sudden, you'll be able to put a free motion foot on your machine, drop your feed dogs down and you'll be able to do all of this free motion. But it's going to take a little time to get there. So we want you to start at the beginning and work your way through. So I've got the... Um, Template B here, the one and a half inch grid. I have a piece of fabric already prepared. Um, I'm going to say to you, as I say to everybody that I teach, please try to use the Hobbs Heirloom double-sided fusible batting because I don't want any safety pins in the road. I don't want a batting that's, I don't want you using a batting that's going to stretch and distort. I don't want you to have to use a walking foot. So if you use the Hobbs fusible batting and you iron the three layers together with a hot dry knot iron, it sticks. Now there's no fuse left, left on the fabric. It's a very, very light fuse, so it doesn't damage your fabrics. You just simply get your hot dry iron out and you just press one side, when you've got that side pressed, you flip it over and you do the other side. It's just fabulous, fabulous stuff to use. 80% cotton, 20% polyester. Have a look on our website. We have it there. It's 2.4 wide um, and you can buy it by the metre or the yard, whatever you want. But I would suggest get yourself a metre, chop it up, make some samples up like this. Um, base them all together by ironing them and then you go and start your preparation work. So now we're going to put the grid down, just like so, and we're going to use a good quality fabric marking pen. I've got the Bohin one that I love to use. I've got the white lead in it. That's not going to mark this fabric for me, so I'm going to click down the top, hold my thumb on the top while I remove the white lead. I'm going to click down till my black lead comes down. Now I'm going to take the top off and I'll put my white lead back inside. So 
One pencil marks any coloured fabric. Have your lead out a little way so that you can get the lead through the hole and you're just simply going to go along and mark the dots. Very simple process. Now the template has like a, a grid on the back. You can hear my finger running across that. That is a grippy side. So you would put that grippy side down onto the fabric so it doesn't slip as you mark this out. So we did a lot of research to find the right um, quality product that we could have for you to use so it doesn't slip and move around on you. Mark all your dots, very, very quick and simple. Then you can use any one of these templates that you want. Now we've got very deep curves. I'd be using this one here to create circles because I could line this up on my dots. So all the dots on here reference back to a dot that you've already marked. We'll just pull this up. Now you can mark along that. Now your pencil just glides along the edge of that curve on the template beautifully. Then you could keep moving down, lining your dots up. Now I'm not going to draw circles just at the moment. I'm just moving this down one little dot at a time. So move it down again, losing your dots. That way you're getting equal distance between each of your rows of quilting without doing any thinking. So you can see there now how I've got these lovely curves to stitch. Now if I want to come back, I can flip the template over, line up my lines, draw again. Now I've got a big oval and a small oval. There's so many shapes you can make with five little templates. I want to put this on here and line up my dots. I'm just going to turn this fabric around so we can see better. We're going to just draw these gentle curves. Just move down, line up your dots, draw another one. Flip the template over, line up your dots. Now we've got this shape happening. So you can see how simple it is to create some really, really wonderful images very, very simply. So I'm just going to show you some of the others and we've drawn them up in a much darker pen so you can see um, quite nicely all the different shapes that we can make. So here's our big circles. You can do smaller circles, space it out. This would be fabulous on a border. So here we have some more shapes. Here's the melon shape. Very, very simple. Draw your curves one way, draw it this way, turn your template on the side and draw that one. Very, very simple to do. So I'm just going to go to the machine and just show you a little five minutes of stitching because, you know, I just would like to show you a few things there. Now, I always do all my stitching um, with the sew slip mat on my sewing machine. This is, has a cutout here where my feed dogs are going to work up through. It has um, sticky back on the side. Now, my mat is getting terribly, terribly um, glugged up at the back with all the fluff because we've been doing a lot of stitching of late. I need to now go and wash this in hot soapy water to get all of that fluff off the back to get the sticky surface back. That's all you do and your mat should last you for years and years and years and years and years. But what it does, it creates a slippery surface. So as I'm quilting, the fabric just glides for me. I don't have to push and shove. And please respect the fact that we're teaching you to quilt on small pieces to be able to turn them into a quilt as you go quilt like we have on the back wall. So let's set this machine up. Now I've got this brilliant table that I got from Baby Lock. Just love it because all I have to do now to sit at this, this table to be able to sew is push a button on the side. My machine goes down to the height I need it to be able to sit out and sew. How clever is that? Under here, I have my cutting mat. 
On top, I have my ironing mat. At the back here, I have a huge big drawer that I keep all my tools in. This is my work table. Love it, love it, love it. So if you're after one of those, contact Baby Lock. Baby Lock in Australia. Talk to George or Karen. So now, at the machine, I have a regular sewing foot on, but I like to use the open toe foot. I just think having this toe opened, it allows me to see the line. If I had um, a normal sewing foot in where it's all closed at the front, I'd find it very hard to see the lines that I want to stitch on. So now I've got my machine threaded up with quite a dark thread, so you're going to be able to see um, the thread. I'm going to put the sew slip mat on. Now, sometimes we have an, an extension table. Some people sew with an extension table. If you do have that, this wide section will fit out onto your extension table. Let me just shift this iron a little bit. If you don't have an extension table, just let it wrap underneath. If it's a bit wide here for your machine, you can either trim it back, but I don't recommend that. Just let it pop up the side there. When you get it on there, do draw your bobbin thread up from underneath, otherwise it will get stuck down and you won't be able, your thread won't sew for you. So just pull it out, then pat the mat down. If it hangs over the side here, it doesn't matter. That does not matter. So we're not going to go into starting and stopping and all those things. We're just going to stitch on a line so you can see how easy it is. Now you may have to adjust your stitch length here, um, depending on your machine to what size your regular stitch is. Um, I like to increase mine up to about um, a three because my, my Benina, love my Benina, but it, it takes a, quite a small stitch at, it, it, at its default, default stitch. So I put it up to about three. You might be on two and a half, you might be on three and a half. It just depends, but no walking foot's needed. But if I didn't use this Hobbs fusible batting, I would possibly have to use a walking foot. So I don't like any of the bulk of those. I don't like the fuss. I don't like the fuss of safety pins. So all we're going to do now is just drive on that line. Yes, you are slightly turning the fabric as you stitch, but with that slippery mat underneath, it is so, so easy because the fabric just glides. Now, if you run off the line a little bit, if you've used that bowhin marking pen that I use to mark my lines, you can erase the lines off where you haven't stitched on the line or it will wash out when you wash the thing for the first time. But if you're just new at this and you're not confident, if you run off the line, that doesn't matter as you're practicing. That is perfectly okay. The only way to practice is sit at your machine and do it. And I feel every single one of us have a talent. We just need to find it. We just need to practice. If you can sew a straight line on your sewing machine, you can be a very, very good quilter. And that's what I would love to encourage you to do. Um, and just let us know how you're going because I think eventually you will be able to start creating beautiful designs on your quilt, just like we have here. And remember, putting your quilts together, quilt as you go as the way we do, they can look absolutely spectacular. With our sasha tools that I've designed, we made all of these sashings. We can really dress up a quilt beautifully with sashings and we do them after all the quilting is done. So please practice, get yourself a set of the tools. We have some great packages out there for you. Get yourself the good quality marking pen. Go to our website, www.pqw.com. Have a look around. Um, select your own tools of what you need. Get yourself um, you know, a metre or two of that batting. Cut up some fabric. Sit at your machine and stitch and stitch and stitch and you won't believe how clever you can become with quilting very quickly on your tiny little domestic machine. Have a look at all of our other videos on our YouTube channel. Subscribe, press the button or press that bell when you go onto that um, YouTube. 
because we want to keep you updated with all our new videos that we've got coming out. So happy quilting, have a good look around and we'd love to see what you're doing. And please share our videos. We'd love you to share it out there. We want to share the love of being able to help you and all your friends really, really get the passion for quilting. Don't lose it. Grab it and take it by the heart because you will love to do it. So bye for now. Stay safe. See you next time.